Good morning and welcome to our service of worship this morning at Lorraine Avenue Mennonite Church. Please remember to keep your cameras and microphones turned off, um, except while we are singing hymns and then feel free to turn your camera on and but remain muted during that time. Please join me in our um, call to worship. Oh, I'm sorry, before we do that, um, I'm going to light a candle as a symbol of our togetherness in worship through the Holy Spirit, even though we are separated by distance. And please feel free to light a candle as well in your own homes. I apologize, I'm having a some technical difficulty here. Please join me in the call to worship printed in the bulletin. One God in reverent awe, we come to worship you. We gather to honor and glorify God's almighty name. Righteous God, we rejoice as we come to worship you. We gather to celebrate God's power over the forces of evil. Faithful God, with thankfulness, we come to worship you. We gather to sing praises to the God in whom we trust. Amen. Our opening hymn is in the Voices Together hymnal, number 638, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Thank you. Crown, 
Good morning, everyone. While this has been a difficult year for all of us needing to do church and Sunday school and all sorts of things on Zoom or on FaceTime instead of in person, I wanted to tell you about something really exciting that has happened to us at church because of the generosity of many people who have given to the fund for our new hymnals. We were able to purchase those hymnals and they arrived at the beginning of the year and I wanted to show you what they look like. We've been singing out of them, but you all have not been able to see them. They are called Voices Together and they have this beautiful purple cover with gold lettering on them. Voices Together includes hymns from our older hymnals that we have been using, Hymnal A Worship Book, our blue hymnal, as well as Sing the Story and Sing the Journey. Something that's new in Voices Together, as well as some new hymns that are not in the other hymnals, is that there is artwork in that new hymnal, so I can't wait for us to be able to worship together and you can see this wonderful artwork that's included throughout the hymnal. It's really beautiful and enjoyable to, to look at. Something many of you may not know that I do at church is I'm the one that chooses hymns for worship every Sunday. Most weeks I'm able to find hymns that go very nicely with what the pastor is preaching on and with the scripture for the day. However, there are some weeks when I just can't find the right hymn, so I, I will confess, I just pick a favorite of mine. And I wanted to give you all the opportunity to do that as well. So if there is a hymn that we haven't sung in church for a while that you would like to sing, please have your parents email me and I will try to include that in the near future. Thank you so much for listening this morning. This is a time in our service when, uh, if we were meeting in person, we would bring our first fruits offerings and offer those as the ushers pass the plate. We can continue to offer those first fruits offerings through PayPal or sending them in in the mail. And we want to take time now to give thanks for our many blessings and the way that God uses those blessings to help others. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, our offerings proclaim that work and worship are one, that life is undivided. Use these gifts for your church's ministries of reconciliation, service, and mercy. Amen. Our next hymn is number 680 in Voices Together, Calm Me, Lord. Please turn on your cameras if you wish, but leave your microphones muted. Thank you. 
Our scripture reading today is from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Good morning. A recent book by Scott McKnight suggests that the most important work of the church is to be a place where people can be become more like Christ. The act of creating a culture in which people can be conformed to Christ is called Christoformity. This author McKnight says that a church culture of Christoformity is marked by friendship. Our scripture today gives us a similar glimpse into our highest calling as we seek to follow Christ and conform to Christ. In today's passage from John, Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. I do not call you servants any longer, but I have called you friends. And finally, Jesus reiterates, I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Clearly, friendship is marked by love. Who was your first friend or your oldest and longest friend? Some of us may be fortunate to, to answer my mother. A few weeks back, our friend Kathy Everingham said that the longer it has been since her mother's death, the more she has missed her. That has stuck with me. These past few weeks, I have been missing my dear Grandma Mary Ann and all kinds of life happenings and small things that remind me of her. My heart goes out to all of you who have lost mothers and grandmothers, whether recently or many years ago, whether those mothers were biological or heart mothers, persons who loved you dearly and fiercely. On this Mother's Day, I'd like to explore some words from female theologians who have called Christ their mother, because it will give us some insight into this deep friendship that Jesus calls us to, and that we as a church are called to practice as our central culture. Shown here is the cover of a book by womanist American theologian, Christina Cleveland, called Christ Our Black Mother Speaks. And Cleveland writes about the experiences of black women in this book and relates these to the gospel and Jesus's life. She writes that like a mother, Christ is all about relating, nourishing, creating, supporting, and interdependence. More than relational, Christ mothers. She pulls in a quote from Kelly Brown Douglas, and you can see that the artwork in this book is beautiful. Christ can be seen in the face of a sojourner truth, a Harriet Tubman, 
or a Fannie Lou Hamer, as each one struggled to help the entire Black community survive and become whole. One of the essays in Cleveland's book is called We Are All Mothers. And in that essay, Christina Cleveland defines the act of mothering as creating something new out of our pain, practicing mutuality instead of hierarchy, choosing self-love instead of internalized oppression, practicing intersectionality, and refusing to let hegem hegemony divide and conquer us. Another one of her essays is, starts with this quote and artwork that says, you are with me now and I am handling it. And I relate to that saying, um, both as relating to mothers, I think of how often I've called on my mother for help, and also in relating to Christ and God in prayer. Um, once we reach out to God in prayer, situations are so much easier to handle. And another theologian who called Jesus our mother is Julian of Norwich, a 14th century Christian mystic who said that a mother's is the most intimate, willing, and dependable of all services because it is the truest of all. None has ever been able to fulfill it properly but Christ. She wrote that Jesus is the kind, loving mother who knows and sees the needs of her child and guards it very tenderly. So how can we as a church conform to Christ and guard one another very tenderly as true friends? Particularly during the pandemic when we can't see one another, our church community has relied on cards, emails, phone calls, words to one another and outdoor visits to sustain our friendships. I've seen how supportive, loving, and joking comments are made among church members on Facebook. We've found many different ways to be friends and encourage one another. I have thought throughout the pandemic how much of a difference it has made to have our church community. I've felt connected and sustained by church relationships, even when we haven't be been able to meet in person. I'm so grateful for our church community and for all of you. Indeed, all of us at Lorraine Avenue Mennonite Church are active in practicing true friendship. I've heard stories of phone calls made and meals delivered and experienced this myself. Thank you. And I have a vision of us woven together in a tapestry of interconnected lives. It is a beautiful thing. Another relationship for us to be attentive to is that among our pastors and our congregation. I'm the chair of the pastoral support team, and I recently received some tips for caring for pastors from our Western District Conference librarian, Jenny Wintermote. I would like to share these with you. We can be supportive in our relationships with our pastors by advocating for and supporting pastors developing and practicing good self-care practices. We can make allowances for the need to, chair, to share to care for families. We can provide support and resources to help pastors deal with conflict in the congregation or crisis, either personal or congregational crises. We can encourage pastors in their work using cards, words, email, whatever feels supportive to the pastor. And during the pandemic, we don't have the opportunity for those casual encounters after worship service to say, hey, I loved your sermon, um, or just touch base. So this becomes more important to be intentional about. We can also provide relief from the workloads of our pastors when they are facing conflict or crisis. And also within these tips from Western District are uh, the reminder to us as a congregation that congregations should be realistic about expectations and articulate, articulate their genuine goals. So the pastoral support team plans to share some more information about fostering healthy relationships via the e-news from time to time. 
Just as Jesus says in today's scripture that he calls us not servants, but friends, the flat cert, flat church structure of the Mennonite church paves the way for true friendship between pastors and congregations. However, we still need to be aware of the professional roles that our pastors play, and we should be attentive to our relationships and friendships with them, just as we are attentive to all of our friendships within the church. Whenever we practice true friendship, we are fulfilling God's call to love one another. Julian of Norwich said that to the property of motherhood, and I'll add true friendship, belong nature, love, wisdom, and knowledge. And this is God. Thanks be to God. On this Mother's Day, let us remember that mothering like Christ is an act that is accessible to all who support, encourage, create, and sustain community and the wholeness of individuals. At their best, mothers see, recognize, nurture, and defend their children's true selves. Whether those children are biological, adopted, fostered, honorary, or simply our friends. Living out these mothering ways takes place as a reciprocal act of mutuality within a true friendship, and it is a way that we as a church can conform to Christ. I would like to end with artwork from Christina Cleveland. where it says, into love's hands, I commit my spirit. This echoes Christ's words on the cross, but I think that it can serve as a reminder that we can all commit or conform our spirits during our time on earth to the love and friendship that Jesus has called us to. Amen. Please join us in Voices Together, 162, The Love of God.
Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here, and thank you for all of this beautiful music, and thank you, Katie, also for that beautiful sermon and for that mm -hmm. invitation into true friendship and reimagining of mothers. Uh, Christina Cleveland is a favorite theologian of mine, and so I was happy to see her show up today. <sighs> Welcome. We have come to the time in our service for the work of the church. Continue our service with singing from Voices Together, number 205, Light Dawns on a Weary World. you dearly and calls you friend and go in peace for it is the gift of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. 